today's teaching, the title of today's teaching is contentment. Are you content? Content or contentious? Yeah, are you content or are you contentious? <laughs> That's weird that the word contentious holds the word content. Yeah. <laughs> when, they, when they mean the opposite things, right? It, yes. It seems yes. as though contentious should mean more of or full of content, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It's the absolute opposite it of it. It so. divides content. It separates content. So that Rodriguez says he can't divided. put a name to it. What hap what's happening on Monday night? Jesus. So he, just he puts Jesus. Jesus' name to it. All I want is for you to take that to Wednesday night to our junior high and mm, high school kids. Come so. on. Good morning, Miss Janet. Love you. Good morning, Tani. Good morning, <clears throat> Neil. Good morning, Carrie, Elizabeth. Welcome everyone on Facebook. Okay, so we are in 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning with verse 3. We took a care of all the difficult thank you scripture for, yesterday thank you. while you were gone. So. I watched. It was, uh, you did good. You did good. I love that story about Charleston, South Carolina. Can you believe, though, that that scripture on Masters and Slaves was the day I got back from Charleston. It was so weird. That yeah. was so, so crazy that I had that, that story. That tell. Jeremiah Lamphere story is a really good story. He, I just, uh, I could feel my spirit just stirring. God, do it again, do it again. You know, just like, just takes a, somebody, right? Just takes, just takes people willing to be instruments, willing to just like want this so much that everything- Willing to lay aside everything, everything else. Everything else, just, yeah, it. just like, I just, we just, a care for, for our nation and care for our, our, our generation. You know. Well, today we're talking about um, false teaching and holding fast to the true teaching. And it's so practical, you guys, this whole First Timothy. I mean, Paul's being really specific and real practical. Right. And some of the things we don't understand because it's so in content. Context. Context, thank you. <laughs> you context. <missed> <laughs> When I'm when Jim's not here, I don't have anybody correcting how I misuse the English language. So, so we have it in context or content. <laughs> the content is in context. <laughs> and if you get it out of the content, you become contentious. But if you get it right, you become content. Oh my gosh! Here we go. Content depend. Con con contentment depends on con content. content. All right, let's go for it. All right, what verse three? Verse three, yeah. So, are you going to use the passion? Or I don't know. I have I've decided, got both yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. You go. You read. All right. I'm going to use the um, Tony Evans Bible, so the Christian in, um, translation. Teach and encourage these things. <coughs> Number three, verse three. If anyone teaches false doctrine and does not agree with the sound doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the teaching that promotes godliness. What does yours say? Holy awe of God. Yeah, anybody who... It says, does not agree with the healthy instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ, teaching others that holy, holy awe of God, God is not important. important. And I think that's what's happening on Monday night, Saturday night, Sunday, restoration. Monday night, mm -hmm. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, a holy A return awe of God's God. holy awe. Yeah. That's it right there. That is it. And it comes through the goodness of God. And we're going to talk about the good, goodness of God. I've just been studying that word good, a good mm. God. And he created everything good. And yeah. he wants good fruit coming from a good tree. So this, this holy awe of God is, I, I think, I mean, they tie it to the fear of the Lord, that old classic King James phrase, the fear of the Lord. So I do believe that that's one of the things that's returning to the church right now is, is a, a, a fear of God, that be, you know, the beginning of wisdom. So you have to remember, okay, the context of this scripture is Paul is getting ready to go to heaven. He's been pastoring. He started mm. the churches. He's been missionary. He's been raising up and planting churches. And he's had enough experience now to know what causes people to walk away from the faith. That's right. So he he's has seen been in this long over. enough right. to see hundreds and thousands of people come into the church. Wow. And now he's beginning to see the walk fall away. What causes people to... Yeah, mm -hmm. and so he's burdened for that. He, yeah. he hates that, and he's trying to instruct Timothy, watch for these things, teach about these things. And so it says that the person te who teaches false doctrine and does not agree with the sound doctrine of Jesus and the teaching that promotes holiness or godliness or awe of God, he is conceited and understands nothing but has an unhealthy interest in disputes and arguments yeah. over words. This, Jim? This says, Jim, over <laughs> words, contentious and content and context. Uh, it says, this <laughs> proves they know nothing at all. It's obvious they don't value or hold dear uh, the, the healing, healing words. 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so um, Jesus' words brings healing, but there's something about his teaching that people try to dilute or go away from him. Why? Why? Well, I, I mean, he's going to say in a minute, they're covered with, with conceit, okay? And so, like, what do we hold dear? And it's, I mean, this is so transgenerational, like historical, but it's the same problem today as it was back then. People value certain aspects of the ministry. And, and so they'll lift up certain words and certain techniques of ministry, certain um, values instead of the healing words of Jesus. And it, and it, it self-promotes. It makes them feel good about who they are rather than promoting the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, so in this scripture, Tony Evans has a whole um, thing about the kingdom of God. And he says, those of us who have been raised in a democracy where we get to vote and have oh, our wow. opinion cannot Ooh, comprehend like how this. the kingdom of God is is run, mm. rule and reign, one king. <clears throat> That's right. Whatever the king says, there's the king's opinion and everybody else's. But what the king says is, is it. It's the truth, you know what I'm saying? And so if anybody disagrees with that, they are no longer under the kingdom or representing the kingdom. So, good. so as far as the kingdom goes is as far as his rule reigns. Yeah. And so his kingdom can only come to the earth and be in the earth, the kingdom of God, as long as we submit to his teaching, his rules and mm -hmm. regulations. But those of us in America, those of us in a democracy, we like our independence, yeah, right? Yeah. In Texas, we love our independence. Americans, we love our independence. Man, we had independence against the British, you know? We're proud of that and everything. And so we don't understand God's, God's the end. God's word, God's rule, God's reign. That's the bottom line. I really feel something on this whole dear, the healing words of Jesus. You know, is it Bill Johnson that's always talking about, like always quoting the verse of scripture where Jesus says, my words are spirit and life, you know? And he says, you know, you study the Bible for you think that in them you find life, but the only reason the scripture matters is because they testify of me. My words, and, my, and again, another thing that's happening among us, I think, is the restoration of an intimacy with Jesus himself so that his words are speaking to us. I mean, they're giving direction to these young people. They're giving hope. They're giving strength and power. So I really love the idea that the scripture, you know, the scripture is so important, but hold dear these words of Jesus. So yeah. this, the rest of this chapter <clears throat> talks about how people look for other things to find their joy, their peace, mm. their happiness, their contentment. And so he really comes against like riches and going after wealth, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and it's such a hard balance for me. Mm. You know, it's such a hard balance. Something happened to your phone. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. But anyway, let's keep going here. It says he is conceited, he understands nothing. Verse four, but has an unhealthy interest in disputes and arguments over words. From these come envy, quarreling, slander, evil suspicions, and constant disagreement among people whose minds are depraved and deprived wow. of the truth, who imagine that godliness is a way to material gain. Wow. That's quite the verse. Yeah, I love this. I mean, this, this is quite different. These are pretty different translations, but it says the fruit of their ministry. Well, let's go. They're loaded with controversy and they love to argue their opinions and split hairs. <laughs> they, the fruit of their ministry is contention, competition, evil suspicions. They add misery to many lives by corrupting their minds and cheating them of the truth. So, um, you, you know, um, they equate the worship of God with making, with making great sums of money. They like to argue. They like to split hairs. They like to question everything. And instead of just going to the beauty of the Lord and the holiness and loving people, loving God and loving people, bottom yeah. line, but the beautiful teachings of Jesus, they like to quarrel and about. And it's, it's not just content that we're talking about. It's a spirit of mm. ministry. You know, I mean, the devil accurately quoted the word of God, okay? So it's not like you, you have to just get the right 
Sometimes they can, you can use the truth. You can, you, you can be accurate in what you're teaching, and yet the spirit of the thing is getting the wrong gain. Instead of gaining godliness, you're trying to gain self-promotion or gain... Or just being right. Just yeah, wanting to be yeah right. just the competition to be right. Do you remember the TV right. show we used to watch, Hank Hanagram or something like that? Do you remember that? Barely. And he, and he would take... The Answer he, Man? He would, he? he would just take everything, especially about spirit-filled Christians, mm. and cause us and call us all kinds of names. And he yeah. spent his life trying to show how streams of believers were not holding fast with truth. He just, his whole life was based around arguing yeah. and putting people down oh, yeah, rather than exalting that. Jesus Christ. You yeah, know? And, and that's that's the deal. You can have you can have good information, you can have scripture memorized, you can have all the orthodoxy and still your spirit as, a, as an influencer, as a leader, your spirit can be really so, um, uh, well, you know, competitive and contentious and suspicious of other people. I like that one too, evil suspicions. That's a bad spirit when you're walking around all the time, you know, putting suspicion on somebody else, like what they, what's their motive? You know, what are they doing in the body of Christ? We have of got to hold ourselves accountable and our emotions and the way we judge people. And mm -hmm. how do you think about people? How do you feel? How does that infect you? Is it to the negative or can you just release people to the Lord and just so keep good. walking in your contentment? Because it goes on and talks about here he's saying, I've seen people who have walked away from the faith, who have caused division in the church, who have caused so many people. The Bible really talks about the judgment that's going to come to people who, who teach and cause his young children to walk away from the faith. Absolutely. Wow, you guys, be careful. Better that a millstone be thrown and put yeah, it in yeah, and put around your head neck and, and throw them in the sea than offend one of my little ones. You know, This is the bride of Christ we're talking about. Can you, I mean, I know how I would feel when somebody says something about you or hurts you, though they would never do. They never say <laughs> bad things about you. But I just, you know, if that were to happen, I just, you know, and Paul, as, a, as an apostle, as He's got the father's heart in him. I mean, that's what he's doing. He's like, he hates to see he's his like, children I can't, walk away from yeah, the Yeah, I can't see that. I can't stand to see that there's a that there's an increase of, you know, misery here. They is, add misery to yeah, many yeah. lives by corrupting their minds and cheating them of the truth. So we can point our finger at other people who do this. Mm -hmm. But what about what's the Holy Spirit saying about you? How you no, judge other people? I don't how you? Point others. <laughs> I don't want to how do that. you judge others? How are you? Uh, contentious towards mm -hmm. others and judge other people and and keep yourself separate from certain groups of people or color of people or people who believe a certain way so it, it this is for the Holy Spirit not just for us to uh, point fingers at other people but for us to check ourselves. Can I just say sometimes I mean we're talking about conversations mostly or teaching but we got to mention social media here right? We got to say that contentiousness in teaching, it, it, so much of it occurs, so many of our, so many, much of our competition and evil suspicion is being, is being on the, put on the platforms right now. And um, so this is not just your conversations. This is what you're posting. This is what you're, what you're reading, what you're reacting to when you read it. So come on, y'all. This is, this is real. Really be careful. This really real. let the Holy Spirit walk with you as you have conversations and not just conversations, but what you think about people. I mean, if you just take stock of how your emotions are uh, high and low, fearful, angry, um, like push people away, I think that that is a sign, right? Yeah, and there's this, the, the competition part of it is people wanting are- Wanting to be right. Not just wanting to be right, but wanting, they're wanting to bring us into their not just us, you and me, but they're wanting to bring Others. spiritual leaders and spiritual voices into their side of the thing. Yeah, yeah. Their, into their competition. They gotta win the argument. They gotta win the battle. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So here it goes on and says, they imagine that godliness is a way to material gain. It's interesting that he goes from that what into- What verse are you on six? Uh, just right before six, the end of oh, Okay, five. yeah, they equate the worship of God with making great sums of money. Yeah, so yeah. really, this is another thing is that people who all they care about is becoming rich and wealthy. And, um, you know, there's 
biblical teaching that God's favor is on people's life. He does bless people. There is a need for wealth in the kingdom because every time you want to start a church or a ministry, there's a need for someone to support that and believe in that. But what? how does it control your life? Yeah. You know, there's a balance, right? Always a balance. And I feel like those of us who, who really craft the message of the gospel, we need to really repent right here because, you know, the, the next verse says, you know, we have a prophet that is greater than theirs, our holy awe of God. To have merely our necessities is to have enough. But I really like the King James Version but here. But godliness God. with contentment is great gain. And I feel like what we Godliness we're with contentment. Think about that just right now for just a second. Godliness with contentment. Okay. So I feel like what we've done is we've presented the gospel gain, the gain of the gospel like, okay, if I accept Christ, my marriage is going to be better. If I accept Christ, my business is going to be more successful. If I accept Christ, I'm going to overcome alone. And so we've presented the gain of the gospel as the blessings that come with it. And God is, God is all about blessing, y'all. He loves blessing so much. But the reality is, I think we have to know that what the gain of the gospel is, is godliness with with contentment. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a crazy thing that God, God's ambition with the gospel is to reproduce his character, his testimony, his fruit through us in the earth. That's so the Paul, gain of you the know, thing. Paul, Paul kind of says this about him. He's like, I've had a lot and I've had nothing. Mm -hmm. I've had much and I've had little, but I have learned to be content in whatever state I am. So therefore, when he was in prison for years or when he was shipwrecked or whatever, when people talk bad about it, he'd learned contentment so that when he had money, when he had wealth, he was content. But when yeah. he was lost at all, he was content. And wow, that's, that's a gift, right? I mean, this is a radical claim. And it's like, if you have Jesus, we, we sing songs about it, but I don't think we actually believe it. Like, Jesus satisfies my soul. Does he or does he not? Like, godliness brings the contentment, the presence of God, the, the awareness of God, you know, brings See, contentment. This can only maintain itself through, like what you said earlier, intimacy with God, because you might have it now, but if you don't guard it, if you don't guard mm -hmm. your heart, if you don't guard your motives, if you don't guard your jealousies or your envy or your comparison, Greed. you know, it comes in. It could come in at any time of yeah. your life. I didn't struggle with finances or having stuff until we begin to talk about retirement. Mm. And then the fear of not having enough to retire mm. came into my heart. And so, you know, it's a, continu a continual guarding of your heart. Yeah. Right? Oh, it says uh, we can slip into these spiritual snares. Verse mm. nine, but those who crave the wealth of this world slip into spiritual snares. It says, but those who want to be rich fall into temptation, a trap and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge people into ruin and destruction. And, and, you know, it's not the things that do it. It's the things that are in our heart that bring these, these traps and these snares to us. It says, so verse 10 is a real famous verse. They become trapped by the troubles that come through their foolish and harmful desires. So, guys, here's the secret. Wow. This is a secret wow. to a healthy soul. Come on. Pay attention to your desires. Mm. Right? What is it that you really want? And I think one of the things that's happening for us now by way of reset or revival or whatever it is, I think God is just putting a stronger desire by his grace, a stronger desire in our heart for him, for, for his glory to be in the earth more than retirement, you know, or whatever it is that, that is a desire, you know. He's looking for people who he can trust. Mm with riches and finances because the kingdom of God is need you know it 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 need the kingdom of God to go forward for ministries for churches for for whatever it is looking for people he can trust with a blessing right Absolutely. for blessing and it says in verse 10 this verse that we know for the love <laughs> of money is a root the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils and by craving it, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. We've been at this long enough to know that this is really true. We've seen so many people lose their, their hot heart for God by, um, 
you know, this love of money. Like, I, I just, I'm going to, you know, I, I, I got to work overtime instead of worship God. I've got to... Uh, Spend my money and go out and on the weekends you have... Buy a vacation home. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. those kinds of... And again, God, God wants to bless us, but he wants us to be able to bless us in a way that it complements our relationship with him. This is something that I was wondering. Distract us, not distract us. Do you think us. that God is moving especially and mostly among our young people right now. Because they're broke? Because they're broke, because they have nothing to lose. It's all, do you remember when you were young and you, and you just said, man, I just give you everything, Jesus. I just give it all to you. I mean, there's nothing in this world that I want more than you. But I don't know that we can say that because we have our homes and our mortgages and our car payments and, you know, the lifestyle and, you know, the vacations and, Hey, I'm right there, right? Yeah. I'm right there. And so we have something to lose in the natural. The older we get, you know, our reputations, our jobs, we, yeah, yeah. we employ so many people, you know, people are depending on us. I mean, that's just where it gets historically twisted. It gets right? twisted, right? It gets confusing. It really does. And competitive and all these things that we've just been reading about. Historically, revivals have started with young people. Right, because maybe it's because they're not encumbered with all the things of, of well, life that we are. You know, you I know? mean, there's Azusa Street, and yeah. I don't know how young they were, but I think they were in their 30s, right? Mm -hmm. And the uh, New York one that we did with Jeremiah Lampier, you know, really they were younger men and women in their 20s and 30s, you know, and and yet to keep the fire going for many years, that's wow. That's there something. have been, come on, there are some that have done that though. There are some that kept the fire all the way through. I'm gonna be one of those guys, yeah. you know. I love the, the, the way this, again, uh, Brian Simmons, loving money is the first step toward all kinds of trouble. Loving money is the first step. So guys, that means this has a particular kind of power over, this is not the same as other desires like to be married or to be, you know, to have, to be successful. Loving money is a first step toward um, all kinds of trouble. So that's interesting. Yeah. That's a pretty broad stroke yeah. right there. Well, it talked about the fruit of a bad tree earlier. We talked about that um, when it gave the list about up in, verse uh, four and five, but here's a list of good things and we can maybe end with this and pick it up tomorrow. But it says, fight the good fight. Yeah. I love this, fight the good fight. Come on, Timothy, we're fighting for pure uh, gospel. We're fighting for the goodness of God. We're fighting, um, you know, we're fighting and we're persevering, we're persevering, we're gonna hang in there. But you, man of God, come on, for all of my young men and women watching, I see you, Elena, come on. For you, men of God, man of God, woman of God, flee from these things. Flee from the love of money. Flee from these it. things and pursue. What are you supposed to pursue? These are the things. Make a list, you guys. Write these out and see how are you doing with these. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Mm -hmm. wow. You want to hear this list? This is yeah. such a good list. So run from these errors. Instead, chase I like chase, that after. chase after true holiness, justice, faithfulness, love, hope, and tender humility. So fight with faith for the winner's prize. And again, Timothy, you cannot be passive. You cannot sit back and let the world spin on a plate, let the kingdom of God and just go passing by there has to be engagement, guys. There has to be a resolve, a determination. It's a fight. A fight. It's a fight. It's a battle. Come we are on. in warfare for contentment for ourselves, but we are also in warfare and battle for this generation and for the move of God. Fight. Mine says, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called Take and about hold. which you have made a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I want to do a study. I'm doing a study on that word good because it's all through the Bible. Yeah, yeah. I love that fight, the good fight. You know what? I, I say this because I heard it. You know what a good fight is? One that you win? One that you win. <laughs> it's not a good fight if you lose. The good fight is 
A good fight is a fight that you win. Let's fight to win in Absolutely. the spirit realm. In That's Jesus so name. good. That's so good. Come on, in the spirit realm, through prayer, through intercession, through warfare, learn to fight. Learn to fight it, for this generation. It, it, it's, it makes a distinction between having a confession in, in front of many witnesses. Anybody can say, I believe, I'm saved. This is where the rubber meets the road. How, how engaged are we going to be in um, the pursuit of godliness, humility, justice, the, the whole list that's there, you know, how engaged are we going to be? That's we're fighting, really we're fighting for our families, we're fighting for this generation, this generation. the glory and of God. Come on, you guys, don't quit, don't get soft on me. Fight for character. <laughs> don't get soft on me, get, come on, let's work those muscles of prayer, intercession, godliness, come on, let's give God every aspect of our life, in Jesus' name, do you pray over your finances? Do you pray mm. over your savings? Do you pray over how you're supposed to invest your money? Because as you invest it in the kingdom, it stores up riches in heaven. And so good. the older I get, the more I want to fight, work, work on heaven, <laughs> yeah. what matters to heaven. Yeah. And less Think about it more for earth. sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just want to speak life over you today that you would not be deceived, that you would not walk in deception, that you would not be someone who is contentious and wants to fight and argue. We have certain people who just sends us contentious emails all the time, nothing in building up, nothing encouraging, and it just tears down. But come on, you guys, there is a good God with a good word. His gospel is true and good for the people. Let's walk in that. Let's walk against, let's fight against, you know, the battles of contention and let's learn contentment. I speak contentment over you today. And Father, I just pray for all the fighters who are here today. I thank you that we fight for what we love. We fight for what we care about the most. And I just pray that you would help our hearts to be mirrored in such a way that we're not fighting for the things of the earth. We're not fighting to be better than others or win the, win the competition. Father, I pray that you would help us to fight for this pure, true, hope-filled gospel. I pray that you would help us to fight for godliness. You would help us to fight for our contentment, not, not a satisfaction where we just sit in the same place day after day, month after month, but while we are on the journey to a new level of glory, we would not be dissatisfied and by circumstances are, are the little spiritual mosquitoes that come and bite us and we have to chase them away. I pray, Father, that deep in our heart, you would satisfy us. You would be enough. Your promises, the hope, and the, the anticipation of being with you forever and ever, that would be enough to satisfy the deepest places of our soul. Yeah. So we speak against distraction. We speak against those things that divide us. We speak against those things and that cause us to lose our focus on you. And we pray in the name of Jesus that our heart would be whole and healthy and strong. And, and, we, and we speak to the warrior heart, arise, Come on. arise, fight the good fight of so faith good. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, we pursue righteousness. We're going to pursue it. We're going to pursue godliness. We're going to pursue faith. We're going to pursue, go after love and endurance and gentleness. In Jesus' name. Those are the things we're going to pursue and go after and fight for Amen. in Jesus' name. We love you guys. We Thank do. you for joining us this morning. I, okay, it's getting better. First Timothy's getting better for me. <laughs> it's almost over. <laughs> it's done. We're coming to the end of First Timothy, and then we're going to move on to Second Timothy, which is Paul's More the very same. last words. Yeah. It really has some tenderness to it, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Paul's a fighter. Don't you see it? Paul's a fighter. Of course. I want to be a fighter too. I want to fight to the very end. We love you guys. Have a good day in the Lord. Be, be kind. Be gentle. Be loving. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye.